Rub up your engines! Well, they said they weren't going to do it, but they're doing it. The car manufacturer said, we're not going to give discounts anymore. We're making money raising, charging at bonuses, five grand, ten grand extra surcharges on the cars. Well, guess what? GMC can't sell their stuff now. So this November 2022, they're now saying they're giving a $2,500 discount on the GMC Sierra. Now, realize it doesn't mean all that much, considering that the top of the line GMC Sierra, the ultimate version, starts at $81,295. So $2,500 off isn't much. <laughs> yeah. And they're also giving incentives, like 3.9 APR on the 1500 Sierras. Of course, you, know, you got to read the dotted line and the fine print. You now, all people may not qualify, blah, 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 blah. But the fact is that they're starting to give them out because they can't sell them now. And as time goes on, the recession comes in, they're going to not be able to sell them. That's going to be 2500 off. It's going to be a lot more than that off. When people aren't buying, they have to drop everything with the finance rates going up. Now, they're offering 3.9 here, but everybody doesn't qualify. Today, the average one for cars is up to 7% already interest rates. So, prices keep going up. The interest rates go up. They're going to have to drop prices. That's all there is to it. Not this discount a little tiny bit. They're going to have to really discount them when a recession comes and people aren't spending money anymore and as the interest rates go up the monthly payments get even higher so they have to lower the price even to just make it the same payment that it was as Silamaki says I got 2018 Camry it pops like shooting a gun I drive on a highway at higher speeds it backfires and sound seems like shooting a gun can you help every mechanic tells me a different thing I paid a lot and it's still not fixed well this goes to show you there's a lot of idiots out there calling themselves mechanics these days that have no idea what they're doing. Figuring out why you're popping and backfiring is not complex for any decent mechanic. The first thing, you're going to have to find a better mechanic. If you're around Rhode Island, when I'm here or Clarksville, Tennessee, feel free. Bring it in and I'll tell you what's wrong with it. There's just a few main things that make them backfire. One is if the head gasket's starting to blow, it'll pop and backfire which is very easy to test. I got a video how to tell if your head gasket's blown. Scotty, you can watch that. It shows how that's tested. Two, if you got bad valves, they will pop at high RPMs. And in that case, you do a wet and dry compression test and what's called a leak down test to see if the valves are leaking with compression gauges. Any mechanic can do it. And if you want, you can buy the kits for less than a hundred bucks to do it yourself. Then you'll see are the valves leaking. If the valves are leaking, it's the problem. The other main reason they backfire is the ignition system doesn't fire right. Raw gas gets into the exhaust, backfires because when it hits the hot catalytic converter, it's raw gas and it'll pow. And the other last one is fuel injectors. If they're leaking and they drip too much gas in, they'll back fire because all the gas can't burn. The unburned stuff goes into the exhaust and then explodes. It's not rocket science. Find a decent mechanic who knows how to analyze the data. That's a 2018 Camry. I get hundreds and hundreds of bits of data on my computers to figure out what's wrong with those things. You need to find a guy who knows what he's doing. Not just some idiot with a little handheld tiny scan tool that does, you know, 25 points of data. Mine does hundreds. And any good mechanic can figure out. Especially something like that. Popping when it goes to high RPMs is a relatively easy thing to diagnose. You're just dealing with some moronic mechanics. Eric Mark 7 says, Scotty, what's your opinion on small engine turbos? We think about tuning cars for more horsepower and torque. I have a VW GTI manual. The smaller an engine, you throw a turbo on it, that just rams more air in. And it works. You get power. But the more pressure, guess what? The faster your engine's going to wear out. And a turbocharger in most vehicles today, in the United States at least, people drive automatic transmissions. 96% of Americans, I believe, drive automatic transmissions. So you got a turbo with an automatic. You step on it, everything wears out faster. Not a smart idea for long-term life. Even the manufacturers would admit, well, you know, the turbos, eh, they're usually good for 100-something thousand miles. Usually a lot of them break before. A lot of the Fords are broken well before 100,000 miles. But when they break... They're very expensive to replace. Not only the turbo, but of course, as the turbo wears, the engine gets more wear too. Especially if something goes wrong with the turbo and when it blows, it throws pieces of metal. If they get sucked into the engine, that can destroy the engine too. It 
leaves a whole line of expensive repairs that you would never have if you have a normally aspirated engine that doesn't have a turbocharger on it. But of course, it's cheaper to make smaller engines and on paper they get better gas mileage, so the EPA likes it. The funny thing is, turbocharged cars get better gas mileage on a dyno because they're run by a machine at a certain speed, but in the real world, people have turbocharged cars, they step on the gas more, the engine revs up more, and you actually get worse gas mileage. Who drives a turbocharged car slow? Hardly anybody. Who's your squaff says, I got 87 GMC and can't figure something out. All kinds of electric stuff's going out. The radio gauge lights, cabin light, horn, and one time the turn signals went out. I was wondering, is there common wire or ground that can do that? Actually, there is. And it's an 87. I can just about guarantee you your ignition switch is going bad. You turn the ignition switch on, it sends power to various things. And if it's starting to short out, you will lose those things. The radio, the cabin light, the horn, the turn signals, they all work off power from the ignition switch. I would just tell you, change the ignition switch, the electrical part. It's an old car. You can get it at any discount auto parts store. You just non-plug it, plug the new one in, away you go. It only plugs in one way, it comes with the wiring, and then you just unplug all the wires, plug them back in, and away you go go. And it's an 87, so it's an old vehicle, and you won't have to deal with all the crap of the modern cars with all their computer anti-theft equipment, because yours is old, it doesn't have all that stuff. Change the ignition switch, the electrical portion will probably fix the whole thing. Now, if it's not that, yeah, you could have a wiring problem anywhere. There's wires all over the car. Check all the grounds. GMs are notorious for the ground wires going bad. But if I were you, I would just change the ignition switch first on that. It's so cheap, it'll probably fix everything. Dave Equinox says, I'm told I have a leaking timing chain cover. I got an 05 Equinox, 212,000 miles. Mechanic said it's the water pump or the timing chain cover. I changed the water pump and it's leaking, but there's still a small coolant leak coming near the crankshaft pulley. I'm assuming it's a timing chain cover. But how can it leak coolant? Well, it shouldn't leak coolant. What's happening is, if you lose a little coolant there, it would be the head gasket, then it would drip down. Water is affected by gravity, just like us. That's why we're standing here instead of flying out into space. It's always going to go down. Now, if it runs okay, head gaskets can leak just externally. So it doesn't go inside the pistons and then smoke and burn all the coolant. It just drips a little bit. In that case, get some good radiator sealer and put it in the cooling system. I find the bars one works best. They make a bars head gasket leak sealer that mixes with all the coolants. They sell them at AutoZone, you name it, Hilos, any of the big chains. The ones I found work best are the bottles that cost 20 something bucks. The real cheap ones don't seem to work as well, but the $20 ones seem to work quite well. You put it in, just get one that says mixes with all coolants. I've done that to those. The leak stops for years. Now, if the leak is inside the engine near the pistons, it wouldn't be dripping down, it would burn and smoke, and very rarely do sealers ever fix that because there's too much pressure. But if yours is only leaking externally, it's just the coolant pressure, which is 15 PSI. Not that much pressure, sealers often work. Governor says, why don't electric cars charge themselves? Why can't they charge themselves while cruising down the highway? They can put it on the wheels. That's because of physics, <laughs> the conservation of energy. You're going down the road. All right, it takes energy to propel your car down the road. The batteries are running the motors. That's what makes it go. If you're ever curious, all you got to do is take the fan belt off of an alternator. If you take it off and turn the key on so it's energized, try spinning it. It's hard to spin because there's electromagnetic force. It takes energy. Even though you had those wheels generating electricity as it's rolling down a road if you made one that way, your electric battery and the electric motors that made your car drive would have to work so much harder that you would actually lose more energy doing that than you would get going back in. It's not even an even, it's a net loss process. Generators aren't totally efficient. You would lose more energy by the heat of the generators and then going back and recharging the battery, which is inefficient. On some of these bicycles, electric bicycles that can recharge themselves, you should see what the power you get. You, you get like 7% back of what you put in. It's so inefficient. The only time that would work, you were going downhill and you turn the engine on off and it was just regenerating electricity going down the hill. If it was a really steep hill, you could actually generate things. There is a giant mining conglomeration that has a giant truck, it's an electric truck, and that's how it works, but it's kind of a unique situation. The truck is at the top of the mountain. They fill it with rocks, right? It's an electric truck, so it drives itself up the mountain, empty. Then they fill it up with rocks and it goes down and it glides down and it recharges itself. Then it goes back up, but it's going up empty. 
<laughs> it's going down with all this weight. Odds are you're not going to be going down a hill full and up a hill empty to charge it up. So you can't do it. That's why you can't charge it. The conservation of energy. You're going to lose too much energy charging it up, and you'd actually end up putting more energy into pushing it forwards because those generators put extra drag on it. You ever get back from the generators charging the battery back? Unless you're going downhill all the time. Nobody does that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.